With this video, we begin a series on the concept of chemical equilibrium. In this particular video, we're going to define the concept of the reaction Gibbs energy. All right, chemical equilibrium is a concept of utmost importance in uh, the chemical curriculum. Uh, this uh, chemical equilibrium controls a variety of processes such as uh, the pH of solutions, solubility products, and so forth. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one can argue that every single chemical reaction reaches a chemical equilibrium if you let it go for long enough. So it's quite important then to try to understand uh, the point of chemical equilibrium. All right, so we know that for processes that take place at constant pressure and constant temperature, then the determination whether you're at equilibrium or not is dictated by the Gibbs energy. Okay, so for a reaction, it's going to be quite important to know uh, uh, what the Gibbs energy of the reaction will be. Okay, so we actually already know how to calculate the reaction Gibbs energy using a couple of recipes, right? So you might remember how our work with the second law kind of finished in a definition of the reaction Gibbs energy, which was uh, something like this, where you could either combine the enthalpy of the reaction and the entropy of the reaction, or you could calculate the uh, reaction Gibbs energy simply using the balance of the Gibbs energy formation of products and reagents, right? So that would be the sum of uh, the Gibbs energy of formation of products, uh, this is smaller, minus the sum of the Gibbs energy of formation of reagents. R. Okay, here we have the uh, stoichiometric coefficients need to multiply this uh, Gibbs energy formations. Very good. All right, there is a huge limitation though to these recipes that we have right here, and that is that the data that you need to use in order to uh, calculate those reaction Gibbs energies is always going to be under standard conditions, right? So these expressions all have this superscript referring to the fact that they are at standard conditions. And if you remember what standard conditions are, right, those mean that uh, this is going to be one bar of pressure okay, uh, on pure substances. Now, uh, that happens for gases. The standard state, we all have also have to find that in solution would be a molar concentration of one molar, right, which is uh, really highly concentrated. So let's actually then see uh, with an example how limiting that concept of the standard state really is. Think about a simple chemical reaction, the gas phase, where you have nitrogen reacting with oxygen to generate nitrogen monoxide, two molecules of it. Right, so we can go to tables and either using this recipe or that recipe, easily calculate what the change in reaction Gibbs energy is, but that would only be at the standard state. And what that means is that that value of the reaction Gibbs energy would only work if you have one bar of nitrogen, one bar of oxygen, and one bar uh, of ni uh, uh, NO, nitrogen monoxide. Right, so uh, uh, that's, that's not very useful because suppose that we're interested in calculating the, whether this reaction will happen in the natural environment where uh, the pressure of N2 is about 0.78 bar, the pressure of O2 is about 0.21 bar, and NO exists but, but in, as a trace, in trace amounts, right? So, so something, a very small pressure. Right, the, the value of the reaction Gibbs energy that you're going to be obtaining from these recipes is really not going to be adequate to calculate whether the reaction would be spontaneous or whether you're at equilibrium under ambient conditions where the concentrations are not those of the standard state. Okay, so we're actually then, uh, what we're going to try to do is see if we can then calculate the reaction Gibbs energy, but not at the standard state, instead under any concentration conditions that we want, right? So if we're able to do that, then this will be extremely useful. Again, our goal is to do, uh, try to see if we can calculate this, right? The, the reaction gives energy, but not subject to standard conditions, uh, instead at any conditions that we wish. Okay, so let's see 
how we begin to think about that in this video. I'm going to develop it a little bit more in the next video. All right, so let's see. We're going to uh, design a very simple chemical reaction in solution. Okay, so we're going to have here simply uh, a solution with uh, a reaction A going to B, perhaps. Right, and then uh, these are two different substances and they will be in different concentrations. Now, um, what we can, uh, the definition of the reaction gives energy is simply uh, as follows. You can say that, well, uh, uh, we're going to assume that a tiny little amount, a few moles of A turning to B, and then we can simply calculate the change in Gibbs energy in that process, and that will be the reaction Gibbs energy under the conditions, under those concentrations that A and B are, are at. Right, so we can say, well, uh, initially then, uh, the Gibbs energy before this differential of N transformation takes place, then that's simply going to be the chemical potential of A multiplied by the number of moles of A, and the chemical potential of B multiplied times the number of moles of B. Okay, and then at the end of this transformation, right, this tiny little bit, uh, a few moles of A turning into B, then we will have that uh, the final Gibbs energy will be the chemical potential of A uh, multiplied by the number of moles of A, which will be your initial moles minus the little bit that have reacted, right, and then B would have gained some moles, right, so you will have your initial moles plus the little bit that you have gained through the reaction. Right, so the difference in, uh, between these two will tell you whether the process will be spontaneous, right? So we can, uh, we can take that, so uh, we're going to call this uh, a differential of G, because uh, this uh, transformation is infinitesimal. So differential of G, we can do this and uh, recognize that uh, this term uh, is going to cancel with that one and that one, and the only thing that you're going to have surviving will be uh, the chemical potential multiplied by those differential of n's, right? So uh, taking common factor uh, of differential of n, notice the differential of n actually does not depend on a or b. This is whatever amount of moles you're, you're transforming, right? So that will be 1.010 to the minus 3 moles, right? So, so if that's the amount of a that you've lost, that will be the amount of b that you have gained. Okay, so differential of n, again, does not depend on uh, this substance. Anyway, so uh, taking common factor of the differential of n, then we find out that here you will you can have the uh, difference between the chemical potential of A, B, and the chemical potential of A. Okay, so this actually is going to set up our definition of the reaction Gibbs energy. This uh, ratio of differential of G versus differential of N, this is what we're going to call uh, the reaction gives energy. In this particular case, it's actually going to be per mole. Notice that you're dividing over the numbers of moles, so it's going to be a molar reaction gives energy, and this is simply the chemical potential of B minus the chemical potential of A. Okay? And this is very useful because we are experts now in writing chemical potentials for substances in solution, if there are solutes in ideal dilute solutions, or gases, we know how to do that for all classes of reactions, so, so that's going to be uh, quite important. Now let's then review here the conditions under which the reaction will be spontaneous, and this will illustrate very nicely the concept of chemical potential. Notice that the reaction will be spontaneous at these conditions, right, if uh, this difference is negative, right, so that's going to happen if the chemical potential of A is larger than the chemical potential of B. All right, uh, so that's where the concept of chemical potential really comes uh, from. Right? Notice that if you assume that that chemical potential is a chemical punch, an ability to elicit change, right? A, uh, if A has a larger chemical punch than B, then the transformation of A into B is spontaneous. Right? But if B has a larger uh, chemical punch or potential than A, then the transformation of B to A would be spontaneous, right? So that I can illustrate nicely the name of the chemical potential. All right, so uh, this is our root expression, and we're going to develop it a little more in the next video. But to close this video, we're actually then going to see a little bit of, of how uh, this begins to 
uh, give us some understanding of chemical equilibrium. Right? So what I'm going to do is simply plot how um, the Gibbs energy of this process, uh, which I'm going to call here G, uh, changes with the conditions. Right? So what I'm going to call this uh, reaction progress. Something that is uh, very important is to recognize that these chemical potentials depend on concentration. Right? So you might want to start the, the reaction with a lot of A, your reagent, and very little B, your product. But as A is reacting to B, the concentrations are changing. That means that these chemical potentials will be changing, and so will this uh, Gibson the reaction. Okay, so this might mean that even if your reaction is spontaneous at the start of the reaction, right after the the reaction has gone uh, has uh, gone by a little bit, then it might be the case that it might not be spontaneous anymore. Okay, so let's try to illustrate that graphically. Right, so this is reaction progress, and here you will have zero percent complete, and here you might have hundred percent complete. Okay, so in this case you will have only reagents are present. And in this case, you will have only products are present. Okay, so for a given chemical reaction, the way that this graph might look like is something like this. Okay, uh, and notice that then uh, the slope that you have at each point, so that slope, this is simply differential of G over the progress of reaction. Okay, and this is exactly what our uh, reaction gives energy is. Right, so it's the slope that tells us whether this process will go forward or not. Okay, so we start the reaction and the slope is negative. That means that under constant pressure and constant temperature, the reaction will go forward. Now we come to this point and then we see that yes, uh, the slope is still po uh, positive, sorry, negative, right? But the slope is starting to be a little smaller. As a matter of fact, it becomes smaller, smaller, smaller until you get to that point. Okay, so we're gonna call this maybe 75% complete. At that point, what happens is that the reaction gives energy is zero, right? So what that means is that you actually have reached equilibrium. And once you have reached equilibrium, there's no way that you can move forward uh, further towards products, right? Because going up and generating, say, instead of 75% products, 80% or 85%, that would mean that your change in Gibbs energy would be positive, and that is just not spontaneous. Okay? Right, conversely, you might want to start the reaction maybe here, right? So, so you can tweak the concentrations of products and reagents so that you have 90% of products and 10% of reagents. If you start the reaction like that, what this diagram is telling you is that, well, uh, the reaction in the opposite direction, B to A, will be spontaneous, right? And so B will turn into A, B will turn into A until you reach equilibrium. But once you reach equilibrium, then there will be uh, no uh, additional way to continue to go from B to A. Right? Once you're there, the reaction is finished. There's nothing that you, you can do about it. Okay, so uh, okay, in this video, we have uh, introduced a very important concept of the reaction gives energy. And something that is very important is that that reaction gives energy depends on the concentrations of the species undergoing a reaction. Right? All of that is going to be coded into this expression. So in the next video we see how concentrations uh, enter uh, this calculation of the reaction gives energy in an explicit way.